Hi guys, Captain Steve with a one take walkthrough. This time it's a very unique boat. Brand new Aviara AV32. Now the reason this is so unique is that they did a focus group and brought together so many people and came up with a plan for building a boat that had all kinds of features that you just don't normally see in a boat. And they're all loaded into this boat. Starting with the swim platform comes out three feet, 10 inches. There's a swim platform underneath that retracts out from the bottom. And notice, it's also almost full beam. There's a grab handle in the back. As we come forward, looking at the seating, bench seat going all the way across. There are beverage holders to both port and starboard. Underneath, stereo remote. Now the really unique thing about this, not only, whoops, it's these ones. Not only can we lift these seats up, Shay's position all the way across, so now we can have comfortable seating looking aft. Most times you've got boats that have seating that will have a flip seat back. So now you've got to sacrifice either one or the other. This one does it a little bit differently now. Three different positions we can have bar stool style seating. So now even with people in the forward seats and the aft seats, we can have another person still sitting in these seats enjoying the action from behind the boat. At the walkthrough into the cockpit, Take a look at this, fender storage. Now as we walk on through, the access is angled so that it doesn't impede on the seating. And not only that, but also notice how we can access, access this seating without having people move out of the way. There's storage under all of these seats and the bulwarks Teak mount on stainless steel uh, beverage holders, two grab handles, speaker, and USB connectivity. <clears throat> Over on the other side, wet bar that includes a sink, bottle holders to the side, and these are deep enough so that they can actually hold wine bottles. There's a cooler under this end, a refrigerated drawer, a utility drawer that's set up nicely to hold utensils, trash receptacle in the back, and then a teak mounted corner piece that holds even more beverage holders. And notice there's another teak mounted piece right over here with storage underneath. Now as we move forward, oh first, before I do this, look at this seat. I should mention the upholstery on this seat is cool feel and even if it were black it's still cooler to the touch than the white regular vinyl that we normally see and there is a noticeable difference so they did a really good job with this and it's all so nicely upholstered notice this aft facing chaise lounge at the beginning of this l-shaped seating over here and just ahead of it there's a bit of a leaning post for when we're forward facing and can watch the world go by as we're driving along now 21 inches wide Walk through over on the port hand side. There's an air dam and the window can be closed off. Wrap around seating all the way up forward. There's a filler piece that goes into that section right there so the seating can go all the way around. There's storage under all the seats. There's a cooler under this left hand seat. There's storage um, in the deck that will also hold a table for this area so we can increase this one's functionality. And just like in the cockpit, we've also got a corner mounted teak piece that has storage underneath. And I'd like to see this be able to be secured a little bit better because as we were operating this boat, and I'll get more into the operation in a minute, when we'd hit waves, there's no hull slap, no pounding. The only noise we heard was this right here. That's it. But we'll get more, as I say, into uh, how well this boat handles in just a minute. In the bulwarks, again, recessed area with beverage holders, mounted antique speakers, and these are Clutch, uh, Clutch, I think is the name of it, but uh, home audio level stereo system on this boat with USB connectivity all around the boat. Now, the windshield, big, huge windshield. There's a large one piece windshield over on this side, and then you've got the smaller walkthrough windshield. Let me close that up so you can get a better visual on that. There you go, so there's the smaller one and there's the larger one. And now notice we are utilizing a glass dash concept here. Uh, there's a 10 inch screen, 12 inch screen, 
and then a seven inch screen. No uh, gauges, no switches, everything is taken care of with these um, screens. The one on the left controls all of the ship's switching functions, and excuse the uh, little fading there with the, uh, the way that that is cycling. The center one is for navigation, and we can also have gauges coming out of that, but mostly the gauges will be out of the seven inch gauge over our, the seven inch panel over on the right hand side that will um, give us all of the information for the twin six liter 385 horsepower Ilmore engines. Just below, the more uh, important buttons are located down there so that we can have quick access to them. Over to the side, automatic trim controls, digital engine controls. Now this also includes features such as um, the select function, engine sync, and um, trailer mode. Then we've got the joystick just behind for the um, engines, and that joystick is very, very sensitive. If you put too much force on that joystick, then you'll notice um, motion right away. You've got to have a nice, soft, gentle touch on that joystick. Underneath, ignitions, beverage holders. The seat is double wide. Those two bolsters are 24 inches. This can be a heated seat as well as the cockpit can have heated seats. And it also adjusts fore and aft. Now let's take a look at these engines. Twin Ilmore engines, six liter, 380 horsepower each. The good thing about these is that there's no salt water going through these engines. They're glycol cooled and the only salt water that we have are in, is going through the uh, back of the um, accessories for the exhaust riser and then the heat exchange system right here. All the engine check systems are up front including the dipstick, the coolant level, drive oil and engine oil. Over to the side dual engine start batteries, house batteries, the sea strainers are easy to access and way over in the back over there there's a breaker panel that's going to be moved underneath the seats and as you can see storage is the theme all through this boat here's underneath the seats and one last thing that we haven't touched on is the head compartment. Porcelain toilet, Corian sink, uh, excuse me, Corian counter with a sink embedded in it. Storage underneath, huge storage compartments right over here on the right hand side. There's a grab handle just on the inside of the door so we have easy access getting up and down the two steps that are just inside and inside the door itself there's a mirror and a little storage cubby underneath. So that, oh before I wrap this up I should point out that one of the most interesting things on this boat was its handling characteristics. I tried as best I could to bring out um, some nasty handling characteristics on this boat and there simply are none. No matter what I did she kept taking it. We had about one foot chop and it just sliced cleanly through. Um, there was no pounding, no hull slap. It was just an amazing handling boat. And more importantly, uh, when I put it into a hard turn, there'd be no chine walk and no digging into the turn. It would bleed off enough speed so that you didn't have everybody and everything getting thrown over to one side of the boat. It was an absolutely comfortable ride all around. One of the most surprising things about this boat, I just kept expecting something would go wrong, but nothing did. That's how well Aviar did with designing the hull on this boat, on the AV32. And that is my full features walkthrough, my one take walkthrough of the Aviara AV32. Remember to hit like and subscribe because there's plenty more coming and feel free to add some comments down below. I'd love to hear what you think of this boat. Until then, we'll see you on the next one.